Hello everybody and welcome back to another 10 V 10. 10 X 10 times 10? 10 V 10. No, this is a V. Don't, don't pay attention to the bottom Just half of my arms. This part. Or the top halves. V. 10 V 10. I'm Nick. I'm Mike. And I'm Steph. <laughs> Sorry, that, that whole <laughs> intro didn't go well at all. No, that's okay. <laughs> we're back and we're doing a little bit of this. Pew. It's one of these. Pew. Exactly. Yeah, we're talking. A little bit of flicking. Going like on. this. <laughs> like, boom, boom. Like, you got little diamonds, you're just flicking them because you're all fancy mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so we're talking about flicking games. Flicking yeah. is a, a really fun mechanic. And that's one thing I like about board games so much is there's, like, so many different types of games. But then there's also, like, yeah, games where you just flick stuff. It's you know? great. <laughs> it's great. I love, that's why With every so Twilight versatile. Imperium, there's a Fireball Island. Exactly. You know? And exactly. we need, and Fireball we need Island all of is better. You know, that's the best part about it. And so, <laughs> um, so we're talking about flicking games um, and people seem to like flicking games. We do a lot. Steph, you love flicking games? Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> right. They're they just, are built for yeah. fun. They, yeah. It's, they it's fun it's in like, All right. They're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's like, I hate, there are people out there who hate them, and that's... that's well, okay. I'm sure. I mean, you know, you can't please everybody, but what's a... I mean, it's harmless, right? Flicking. And, you know, you might be bad at it, so what? The game's over in ten minutes or whatever. I right, mean, it's, exactly. it's harmless right until someone really, like, leans into one, yeah. and then they flick a marble into your <laughs> face. Get some, get some until you lose an eye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, until that time, though, it's harmless. <laughs> harmless. Fun. Harmless. Yeah. It's but harmless. But nonetheless, <laughs> flicking is not a mechanic we really need to get into. It's flicking. So uh, let's go ahead and start with Board Game Geeks number 10. So number 10 is a newer-ish flicking game called Flip Ships, which ranks uh, 1393 overall. This is a criminal Ooh. game where it's sort of um, uh, kind of like Space Invader, right? Yeah, kind of. sort of It's ships totally coming. Space Invaders. It's not kind yeah. of it. Totally yeah. is. It's 100% yeah. uh, TM is Space Invader, where TM, basically TM, TM, these, TM. these ships of aliens are, are descending down to your city, and you have little <laughs> ships that you will put onto the edge of the table or a little stand that they have, and you must flick them up into the air, and they hopefully will land on a card and not bounce off or roll off. And if they land on that card, they destroy or damage that ship, and you're just trying to kind of survive the wave and then ultimately take down the mothership, which is essentially a cardboard bucket that you have to fire into, and it's real fun. Yeah. I like it. What do y'all think of this one? This isn't even our game, but I agree. This is a good one. Well, you know. I mean, it's incredibly stressful because you're like, I can do it, I can do it, and then you're like way off. Like, you don't do anything. And they just come at you, and you're like, no. There, it, yes, it, it's, it's a swarm of just so many ships, and that's the thing. Like, I have, stuff. Statistically, I have to hit have to one hit of them. <laughs> no, you right? Don't. You don't. You don't. <laughs> I go from such competence to incompetence oh, from flick to flick. It's and great. this is one of those games where, like, and flicking games are like this, where you'll have just the most awesome, dope shot, and then the next shot, you'll just go like, <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. And especially because it's cooperative, and eventually, when you get to the end game, you're just trying to kill the mothership. And the mothership is not close by. It is far no. away. And you're just trying to, like, flick all of it. And if you can do it, it is... But so often, it'll hit, like, the rim and bounce out. Oh. You're just like, oh, my God, oh, no. It's, it's so good. It and on top of that, suitably epic. Each person has ships. Each yeah. person has a color. And the ships, you get better ships you go on. And everyone's ships are different. They have so sometimes they'll, like, your ship will destroy a ship on either side of it or something like that. So they get cool powers on top of that that diversify you from your other um, teammates. Yeah. It's just, it's real good. If you can't tell, it's it's real good. It's real fun. Yeah, and, and I won once. And so that's, that's an epic victory. Yeah, you burn it, <laughs> right? Yeah, you're good. I have come down to the final shootout, but I don't believe... I don't I've think I've won, won a game, but it's it, it it's it's fun and epic and difficult. Yes. So it's a good yeah. hard co-op. If, if you have a sharp shooter, they were just hitting that mother like oh, ship like over and over. I'm like, how do you doing that? <laughs> I know. Just Taking let me know your secrets. I uh, know. <laughs> yes. It's so good though. It's really fun. It's silly as you can imagine. A lot of the games on this list are going to be, and that's why it's number ten for board game it's geek. Great. So let's go ahead totally. jump in our number ten. Our number 10 coming in at 1676 is Safranito. Now, if you aren't familiar with this game, it's like a square game and you have these discs and you're trying to shoot onto these different goods to complete these different sets. So if you can get the goods with your discs, 
you can collect the orders and you're just trying to collect these orders by shooting into the right spaces. Of course, you're not going to do this because it's harder than it seems. <laughs> So they made it a Euro game. Yeah. I yeah, they made it a Euro no game. No matter what, <laughs> we will find a way to get some trading guys into man. this game. Gamers can't help themselves. Like, all right, flicking. Yeah. But what if we still traded cloth for gold, though? Uh, right? Am I right? Uh, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Now, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Yeah. Uh, it seems like a fun way to go about it, though. Yeah, I mean, totally. Like that whole very trying to be very strategic uh, to get to the right stuff, then you miss and maybe get into another, you know, good and. Yeah, and uh, you're bouncing benefit. people out of places because it's, yeah. it's a enclosed board, so things are moving around. You know, yeah, as they do. it kind of simulates a nice crowded market where you're literally yeah, like exactly. elbowing people you're out of the way for the bananas somewhere, and you're like, hey, yeah. trying to haggle yourself down. It, you know? it kind of works thematically pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I really yeah. I love that idea and the fact that you can just make a euro game at anything. Yeah, it's that's great. The concept that euro games <laughs> are the down. best. I'm pretty down. So that's why it's our number ten, everybody. Sacramento. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and jump into board game geeks number nine. Number nine from Board Game Geek is Pitch Car Mini. It's uh, 1231 overall. It's the smaller version of Pitch Car. Pitch Car is a, a flicking racing game where you have discs that are your cars and you're going around these tracks that have like rails and stuff and loops, all sorts of craziness. Especially with 3D printers now, people have made wild things. There's jumps and all sorts of stuff. Oh, the I Pitch Car Mini, awesome. Pitch Car can get humongous. Literally, people have, have it pieces. in like totes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Pitch Car Mini is meant to fit like on a table. Yeah. Uh, table. A real table. <laughs> Uh, have y'all played Pitch Car or Pitch Car Mini, and do you enjoy it? I love it because it's oh, just yeah. simple. It feels it's like a fa- race. It, it, yeah. I mean, epic. the mini version is probably good for traveling, right? That's what right, I, yeah. That's what I envision. I, I don't know if there's any real significant differences, but I assume I it's great it's scale. because I love Pitch yeah. Car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Pitch Car is a great concept. It's just it's racing, but with flicking. And again, like, again, talk about like being able to do really good turns because again there's like banks and stuff so you like bank you go and you just get a good ride around <laughs> oh, racer. It's just so and it's a game where like you're never really out of it because if you can get like a great shot oh you're coming back in the it's game, great the definitely the game definitely pushes people to try for glorious things. oh yeah because if they could pull off and thread the needle between four different cars and not hit anything they'll they'll win the whole thing but yeah. then of course you crash and of course and it's great and it's just yeah. horrible but uh yeah pitch car is <laughs> fantastic pitch car and mini mini fun it's a mini bit of bite-sized fun for all of you you can put it in your carry-on so that's what you should do and that's why it's number it's nine in an, an airplane bathroom it's so car small. yeah oh yeah. my goodness <laughs> <laughs> Bitch car and mini is number nine let's get into our number nine our number nine comes in at 3684 and that is jam sumo now jam, jam sumo, sumo players get these dice and it's from a company called Kubico Games, where and he just handcrafts all of the boards and all the games he does, and everything he does is like really a work of art, really. And so this game particularly has a game called Jam and a game called Sumo. And so these dice that you're flicking, you're gonna either play, be playing Jam or Sumo, and so you're going to either want to get the dice in the hole for points, or you want to shoot everybody else off the board. So you're. No matter where you are, once you're done with the dice for the one you're trying to flick into the hole, you're going to add up your points for the dice totals on, on the board and the ones you got off the board. So you get more points if you get it in the hole. So clearly knock other people off the board away from the hole so they can't flick their own dice in. But there's also the other game where you can flick other people just to try and like, it's kind of like a last man standing. Um, you just try and get people off the board. So I love that there's like variety in how you're flicking these dice and you know, it's very simple. The board is not very big. So the hole is right there. It should be very easy to flick your die in there. No, you would not, think. Of yeah. <laughs> That's how it goes. I like games that do that where it presents something simple for you and the challenge is in the flicking is stuff is hard. It we is. don't do that all day. Every not day. a precise art. No, yeah. especially with dice, which are meant to be random and do different things that you're not expecting. And it's cool to have like a simple board, but give you two very different playing experiences yes. within the same using the same components. So that's cool. And it's both seem very simple. You either jam in it or you're sumo in it knocking these people out or aiming for something specific either way you can use some skill uh, especially if you're trying to tumble those dice like you said to different pit values so it's awesome i love it it's like yeah. a lot of stuff and, and like you said if it can be a, a beautiful kind of piece of art as well that's even better like yeah. i love that yeah. if it's just satisfying to look at satisfying to play 
That's good. Yeah. Bo. Quality Boom. wooden games that he does is really great. So um, it, it's definitely, definitely a great dexterity and flicking game. So glad we could get on the list. <laughs> awesome. Right. That's why awesome. it's our number nine, everybody. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number eight. Number eight. All right, Board Game Geeks, number eight ranks 10, 19 overall, and it's called Ascending Empires. I don't know if any of us have played I don't this one. Any of us really know this game. Steph, right? Nope. No, yeah. don't know yeah. it. From what we can gather, it's sort of a space game, and you're flicking, uh, like, starships around. Yeah. So you have a little fleet of starships and battling, so you do kind of flick-based movement and combat. Yeah, which is cool, and then it looks like you're going around colonizing planets and stuff like that. I mean, that's the thing, is, like, flicking for movement is always a cool... Um, some other games will have that, but it's nice. You're like, oh, I'm trying to get to this planet. I gotta flick my starship over this. Sometimes you overshoot it. You warp Sometimes it you, know, you don't come quite to it. It's like, that's a good way to go about it. And and it seems like this is kind of like a bigger game. Um, which and, is also cool. Which is also kind of cool. Because one thing we've talked about, you know, like jam sumo and stuff like that, it's like, oh, it's like, oh you just kind of pull it out, you play it, it's fun, and then you put it away, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, but there are some games that are kind of a bigger affair, which yeah. I also think is pretty cool. You see cool. some of those on the list, and it's, it's always nice when they can turn something that seems silly and kind of build, like, an actual game around it, uh, you know, whether that's set collection or whatever it might be, or, or scenario-based, which we'll see some of coming up. Uh, so it's pretty cool. So Ascending Empires, if you know Ascending Empires and love it, put it in the comments below and suggest, suggest it to us. Think, tell us whether or not we should play it, because uh, it's number eight overall. It's above Pitch Car Mini. Does that I mean do something? love... Ascending Empires. Yeah, yeah, we love it. We're going to love it when we play it. But that's number eight on Board Game Geek. Let's get into our number eight. Our number eight comes in at 689 called Tumbling Dice. Tumbling <laughs> Dice. Dice. Here, take those dice. Oh, my God. Dice it. has no right being as fun as it is. It's no, it just, is. It does. It's, it's so it's much fun. fun. <laughs> it's so, just so the, ridiculous. So, so the way that me and my friends play, there's like 10 of us or whatever. We Everybody has dice. We get as some D20s. We get some D12s. Whatever. People will get the same dice all around. And we just walk around the circle and go... Doo, doo, yeah. doo, doo. It's like yeah. it's like, it's like yeah. a little like... It's like a big carousel. It's like, it's yeah. like, a, yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah. a bake sale, but with dice thrown. It actually works beautiful because <laughs> you can kind of like see what's going on as you're walking around. You're like, okay, maybe we'll go for this. Yeah, we'll go for it. it's, it's the best way to play it. Dice it been knocked off it's just, just nonstop movement. It's really fun. So tell me, guys, you don't know what it is. It's a big board that's got multiple like steps, four tiers essentially. And you are taking dice. You generally have a lot of, you can have like D6s, D4s, 12, 10s, D20s. 20s. Really, you can, you can use whatever dice you want. Valuable. And then when you come to your turn, you then kind of throw it, drop it, flick it down, and it starts tumbling down these steps. And you essentially want it to land as far down as possible with the highest pip level possible but without, without falling off, off the yeah. board. Because your whatever pip level gets times by the number that it's on, right? Mm -hmm. And so whatever floor. Yeah. Exactly. And so whatever floor you're on, so the last floor might be like floor like four. So if you get a six, be twenty four points for that, which is a lot. So essentially you're trying to get it down, but then it starts getting crowded and you're like knocking stuff off. You might try and like knock one of your dice onto a lower level so it gets the, it's oh, yeah. just it gets real wild. And it's best to play with like like Steph said with like ten people. Just just Absolute <laughs> chaos is best. Just so many people, so Late many dice. Late at night at a convention in the faraway oh, yeah. future, since we're not doing that. <laughs> yes. But that's the best. <laughs> get get nice and tired first. Well, B2G does a big tumbling dice thing, don't they? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think, so. I think, I think, a, I think a lot of conch, at least they should, if they don't. They should, Everybody, right? everybody should, because tumbling dice is a great, like, everybody can play. Yeah, so. yeah, it's, exactly. it's just fun and sort of you see what you got in the moment and try to th throw a die that's random. Yeah, you're just trying to have like, it bounce somewhere specific, even though that's D20 not what dice is so do. precious because you're like, oh my gosh, I can get so it? many points if I get the twenty <laughs> on the last level, and you're just like, oh, you're like trying to put some happen. English on it, and it just gets real weird. <laughs> it's not gonna and then work. It goes but... right off the board. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is incredibly fun and simple and silly, um, but it's it's a great time. It's just straight up. So fun. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why time. it's great. It's on our list. I mean, just you can play an infinite amount, just get dice, different colors, whatever, and 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 score some points. That's Tumbling Dice, our number eight. Let's get into Board Game Geeks number seven. So for number seven, we have a double cross over at 816. Or like this it again, BGG. Just cool, like this. Which takes place in an ice school and your penguins ditch in class trying to eat fish and whatnot. <laughs> Amazing. This is a cool dexterity game because it uses these 
um, like like penguin bobbles that are that are uh, heavy on the bottom, yeah. so they kind of they always stand up. One of those things, and you flick these things, and you can do all sorts of cool tricks. Have you gotten good at the trick shot stuff with ice cool? You oh gosh, no, I can't do that. I've seen people do that. I'm like, how do you do that? My finger hurts so bad. <laughs> if I try, that's like, about this game. Flick it down. And it like, hurts. <laughs> If you hurts. flick hard in this game, which you inevitably will be, it, this game it's can hurt. Plastics. <laughs> yeah, but you and can. The penguin you can, just like spins off there. Jump. I'm like, what? Yeah. The? Uh. You can hit it, and you can hit it with an angle, and then it will kind of spin and do the big curve. You can like flick it hard, and it'll jump. Well, because one thing we didn't talk about is one thing that's so cool about this game is it uses the box. Yeah. The box is mul inside the box. There's multiple boxes that get smaller and smaller and smaller, and you actually clip them together. Th these little fish clips. And uh, that's the school, is the box. And it has these little doorways in it so that you're trying to then flick through the doorway to get into the other room. Yeah. But what you can do also is just jump over the wall. So you can like give it a really good flick and you hit the head and it goes boom and it goes up over the wall. And you can do some cool stuff because yeah. there's a hall monitor running around too. Yeah. And so you're trying to avoid the hall monitor, trying to grab fish. It's really, really ridiculous and so much fun. Yeah. It's just. I love it so it's much. It's cool to use a flicking game that has the kind of the the weighted bottom penguins because you can do these trick shots other than just using a normal disc. It's like those. It's a uh, really cool. It's like they used to have those yeah. birds that are like yeah. really weighted in the beaks. They like that. Those used to freak yeah, me out as kids because I was like, "How is this working?" Yeah, it's, well, it's David like, magic. It's the the focal point of balance. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, but so yeah, it's great. No. It's so cool. And, and um, if you get ice cool too, you can make a huge school can. with eight people um, yeah, playing. So it can just get and, crazy. <laughs> and they have giant ice cool that like the penguins are like this yes. big, which I don't know if you like slap. Oh you, you get a hammer and you <laughs> yeah. smack it with a sledgehammer. It's nuts. But uh, it's really fun. It's cool to, to, just because you can do like really neat trick yeah, shots. Yeah, you really can. Like, but in a different way than a lot of other flipping mm -hmm. games. That's why it's everybody's number seven. Ice cool. Let's get into Board Game Geeks number six. Number six for Board Game Geek comes in at $7.98. It is Terror in Meeple City. Oh my lord. This is like. Or uh, as I like to call it, Rampage, because that's how I, was I know say, it. Right? Right? Is I was going to say, right? This is just Rampage, right? <laughs> rampage. But not to be rampage. confused with the game Rampage, which is not like Rampage. So at one point, they didn't have the rights to it. Then people got the rights to it. But this is a game where it sort of, yeah, it doesn't it represent uh, monsters smashing up a city. Uh, in a flicking dexterous type way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't played this, but I've heard it a lot. And I've always wanted to play yeah, it. Have you played Terror in Meeple City, Steph? Um, yeah, I mean, so I think the thing I didn't like the most about it was that you have this like figure in front of you. It's like a little dragon. And you have to put your chin on it. So you have to first blow. Right. <laughs> and and then from there, I think there's a flicking. We can't. It's been a long time, but like yeah. the fact that I have to like put my chin and then blow. I'm like, this is really weird. <laughs> it That's just made me feel weird. really weird. Yeah, that's getting a little weird. You gotta have like the Godzilla like acid breath and stuff. I mean, I it's, guess, but it's just you, you see you hear things like that, and like these days you're like, ooh, that doesn't sound like an appropriate game to play. <laughs> so yeah. blow on this well, game. I, yeah, I I'm mean, not you're playing that. To, I think coffee. destruct it with your with, with your like with your blowing. I, I just. <laughs> I, I don't really remember, but it didn't sit well with me for, when I played it. But I can see yeah. how kids could enjoy it. I mean, it has a very fun feel. You stack up these buildings with meeples, and you're just trying to cause destruction. So I can see how that's fun. It's just that little mechanic just kind of threw me off, I guess. Right on. Yeah. I mean, that's I appreciate fair. the ingenuity, I guess. You know? Yeah, that's fair. That's Terror Meeple City. It's Board Game Geeks number six. <laughs> Let us know if you like it and how you like to blow down buildings and stuff. You can huff and puff. Uh, in the meantime, we'll get into our number six. There must be a flicking mechanic somewhere in there. <laughs> our number six is 1392 overall called Flip Ships. Now we're revisiting this because it's a little bit higher on our list because we really enjoy this. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, we already t we already gushed about it for a while, but it's, yeah, it's we just did. real fun. <laughs> Quan Chai Moria art, so good. It's rad. So um, good. I just felt yeah. plastered all over my wall. Fun fact about flip ships is the uh, flip ships. Oh yeah, the, the box. Name, it's an was it an ampigram. Is that what it's called? Oh, where you can like flip it up. Yeah, like where you can, can you can turn yeah. it upside down and it still reads flip ships. It's very very cool. I just yeah. love stuff like that. It's really neat looking. I it's don't know so what that's awesome. Called, but it's a yeah. great game. It's fun. Try it. It feels epic. It's an yes. epic flicking game. Uh, flip ships yeah. is super duper fun, and that's why it's our number six. Like I said, a little higher ranked than overall BGG. 
do give it a try. Because we know more than that. Um, yeah, you can think you're good, but you're not going to be good at it. Uh, <laughs> so that's great. Uh, let's get into Board Game Geeks number five. Board Game Geeks number five is ranked 710 overall, and it's Catacombs, third Catacombs. edition. From what I understand, this is a, like a, a flicking dungeon crawler. Have you played this stuff? I haven't, but I mean, it's ranked so highly. I've seen it many places. It's one I really should try. Yeah, yeah. this is one I really want to try yeah, because yeah, I've always heard... That, you know, what you said is true. Yeah, which yeah. seems like super fun. We've, we've heard this one a bunch of times uh, referenced like when people talk about uh, um, flicking games or dexterity games they like. Catacombs always comes up because it seems like a cool idea. Like you're going around and, I guess, fighting monsters, avoiding monsters and stuff like that. But it's one that we've like... For all we've heard of it, have just never seen. Uh, you know, I would love to sit down at a con if someone's playing it, but uh, you know, we just got to make it happen because it yeah. seems like it'd be fun. Let us know what you think of Catacombs. Uh, yeah, in I always heard the, it's really, really good. I really want to. Yeah, in the comments below because it seems like really super cool. It's yeah. good enough for number five anyway yeah. for Board Game Geek. Good enough for number. And that's five. something. So let's uh, <laughs> get into our number five. Our number five is 4,247 overall, and that is Valley of the Vikings. Mm. Haba. That came, that was a spiel, a kind of... Uh, it was a uh, kinder spiel. spiel. Was a no, winner. the kin, kin, kinder. Kinder. Yes, I was going to say, it wasn't, oh it wasn't no, it definitely wasn't Kenner. Kinder. Yeah. Kinder. <laughs> kinder it wasn't Kenner. Kinder spiel. What am I saying? Yeah, so this was uh, nominated for a children's uh, game of the year. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, so this is a Haba game. This is a really, really fun game. This is a great... Like a lot of Hobbit games, it's like they're made for kids, but like adults can totally play them. And this is yeah. a totally different. Most times here, we've been flicking dice, we've been flicking like little discs, you know, flipping like little cardboard things. This is totally different. This one, you've got this. <laughs> you're essentially bowling. Yeah, it's like tabletop. You're essentially bowling. You're yeah, it's like tabletop bowling. bowling. <laughs> there is uh, that you have a dock, and there's essentially a dock with a, a couple different people's player markers on them, and each player has a different color, like yellow or blue or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you have in the middle a bunch of different like little cylinders like pins yeah. yeah little pins essentially in different people's colors and then it was your turn you take a big ball like a big ball and a thing to whack it with and you're essentially whacking it towards the cylinders trying to knock over you're certain ones. certain ones and not others to basically move people down this dock it's sort of yeah. like like if you knock over a green cylinder it moves up the green person yeah one. and you can jump over each other and you ultimately like when someone goes off the end of the dock which will happen wherever everyone else is there's gonna be spots you're gonna get rewards and yeah. points and money and things and so you're kind of like betting and hoping that y your stuff gets knocked over but only so much and so it's basically kid gambling and it's great yes um no it's just <laughs> wacky with like you can try to put some English on this boulder. It's just such a funny idea. It's super fun. Of though. like Vikings just like hurling rocks at barrels down yeah. the hill, which I could totally see them doing for real. Yeah, and you want yours to be the farthest along, but not so far. You want to be essentially in second place because the first yeah. person in first place will you want to be go right at the end of the dock, the dock. But not off. Right. And it is so weird and so fun, and I love it. Steph, do you like this game? Oh my goodness, I had so much fun playing this because like you want to knock those people off. And score something, but if you get knocked off, you don't get to score anything. anything. And you're like, Duh! it is so <laughs> it's it's and it's and it's nice because for a kids game, it has strategy because you're like, hey, yeah. you want to knock this person off, so make sure you're going for the blue pin. So again, it's very silly, very fun, very very light, but there is actually strategy in terms of being like, okay, no, I'm gonna try and hit it this way, try to not knock over these because I want this to stay exactly where it is, and, yep. da -da -da. and it's actually. And then you also get to reset the pins. Yeah, so either you want them in the way or out of the way, depending on whether or not you want certain yeah. people to move it's down the dock or not. so ridiculous. It's so fun. <laughs> Such a good time, y'all. I love it. <laughs> it's so fun. It's silly. Uh, it's got good components, as you'd expect from Haba. Uh, and that's why it's our number five. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number yeah. four. Number four for Board Game Geek has been mentioned before by us because it's great. You can play it with a bunch of people like a cakewalk at 689. It's Tumbling Dice. <laughs> Once again. Oh cakewalk, I love it. Uh, tumbling also, Dice is still fun. Yeah. We, we, we talked about one thing that's great about Tumbling Dice is it's got a great audio aesthetic. Because yeah, it's, it's, it's generally a wood board. And yeah. you hear, it's like there's a lot of like... Because you can get like those cascading ones where you oh, hit a yeah. bunch of this. It's like... It's very... And uh, you can get like... And it's just very... It's a very... 
click clacking. I'm gonna get a white noise app to put me to sleep, and it just plays tumbling dice audio. Yeah, but you gotta hear people screaming too because they get very upset. Yeah. No. Yeah, pe- people are so immersed in the game, they're and they get so into <laughs> it, and it's just like it's. You're just flicking dice, but you're like, oh, that was it gets six, yeah. so three. intense. Oh. Yeah, it's, <laughs> there's there's a beauty to games that will somehow convince you that you can do something really skilled when like you, you can't. absolutely cannot. You can't. You you can think all day. I'm gonna do this thing. It's gonna bounce off that. It's gonna just nick off the corner of this one die, pushing it off, rolling me to the twenty on the four. It's like none of those things are gonna happen. None. But like, and it does. But it doesn't ruin the fun. Well, you know what? If you actually turn the die so the one is facing up, then it will land on a six. That's yeah, it's, strategy it's going, right It's there. going to do exactly four and one third revolutions on its way down. <laughs> just obviously, obviously. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You have to get your lucky your lucky pose, and then you'll know exactly where. Exactly. It's going. Yes. Exactly. So you get one hand in the right pocket, and you got to kind of do an overthrow. Yeah. Exactly. That's how you do it. You got to you got to right. balance yourself out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's why I like it's just games that do that where you kind of start so thinking dumb. about like how can I do this well it's like you can't it's just dice <laughs> but like it's it great. just adds to the brilliance of it so Tumbling Dice is number four for Board Game Geek good choice six uh, 89 overall uh, and a really good time do try it especially at a convention if you ever get the chance uh, in the meantime we'll get into our number four our number four is 677 overall called Flick em Up Flick them up. Yeah, flick them, flick them up. up. Flick them up. Flick this, them all up. This you need lots of skill. This, is, is this you actually This one is skill. hard. And this is one of the ones where it's like, this is not like, I'm going to break this game out for 15 minutes and play it. No, you need a whole table. The bigger, the better. Yeah. It's going to take the, the whole thing. Because yeah. you're going to build a Western town. And it's going to take a while because you take turns and you have to set up your shot because we're Western. Yeah. We're yeah. in the Western. Yeah. It's a time setting. It's so fun. Yeah. It's got great bits. Um, whether you get the, we had like the wooden version or you have plastic, but it's just nice. And you have... Um, like storefronts, like it's a wild west town. You like, have these like little storefronts, movie set facades, movie set facades yeah. that have like a little doors for you to go in the buildings. There are little hay bales and cactuses and fences, and and you have little cowboys around. If you want to move your cowboy, you got to flick this big disc, and wherever that lands, that's how far your cowboy ran. And then you can have a shootout. There's always different scenarios. And if you want to shoot another cowboy, you get a smaller disc that's a bullet. It's a little harder to control. And if you flick the you're an opponent hard enough to knock them over and their hat falls off, they get they get wounded. And so there's all these cool scenarios. That's what I love about Flick 'em Up is you can set up you know, sometimes you're trying to like protect and rob a bank, or you're just having a shootout right. in the town. It's a team game. You, so can, it's like... you can do teams. Yeah, you can set up the town however you want. You can create your own things, and it's all just in this like really fun kind of wow. Where shoot 'em up? Yeah, aesthetic. It is. Uh, oh, it's fun. And we used to play on our old dining room table, which was like a big lacquer <laughs> thing, huge. and it was great because it was like it would your disc would either glide like an air hockey table, or it'd go like. And it was just like you no never knew which one it would be. The and there was like, there all this build up. They'd just be like, all right. And you go, and it would go like that. And you'd just be like, oh my God. Oh, it's just so good. Yeah. It's so good. Um, Don't you know you need to flip the disc over at that point because the, the smooth side see? is on the other yeah. side? It's like the cool side of the disc. So you didn't use the right side of the disc, man. That's that's that's, right. that's, that's a right. key strategy. It's the crokinole trick, you see? It's a crokinole yeah, trick. You would not. You know, crokinole might come up a little later and then we'll teach you how to do it. But you can use a lot of yeah. a lot of flick em up strategies <laughs> or similar to crokinole strategies. Especially the Well, that's what I'm saying. Part, and then I, we have, Steph, have you played the, the Dead of Winter uh, flick em up? Um, no, is it different? Yeah, it's co-op. Yeah, it's like for a co-op. One. Ah. It, from what we understand, it is it is the better version. Yeah. And it has this tower, and ah. you basically, like, zombies will dive into it like a, a dice tower, and they'll shoot out, and that's kind of how the... It's like a water the, slide. Like, yeah, like how <laughs> the zombies will sort of move and stuff on you. Um, there's, like, cool, like... You can do like a shotgun blast and different things. I really want to like try it because it seems cool. Yeah, it seems, it's supposed to be pretty fun. So um, either way, if you well, the co-op it, that, that does sound fun automatically. Yeah. I mean, teams are cool too. Yeah. But, but teams, um, you also need a lot of people. Yeah. You really want you can play up to eight players, and you really want at least six. Like it's it's mm-hmm. like or I like to do one on one because you get to control. Everybody. That's true. Yeah, but it's like teams are kind of tough in that way because yeah. you generally need more people. But it's a like straight co op. I really really want to try that version a lot. Yeah. And either way, um, it's just super fun. Uh, it's just a 
that that was like the first flicking game I really played, and I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. Like having the little hay bales and setting up the town, I thought was the funnest thing ever. Uh, so that's why we like it. It's our number four. Flick them up. Let's go ahead and get into Board Game Geeks number three. So close. Wow. So close. Ah. We almost had the same idea. Board Game Geek likes to flick them up just this much better than we do. Teen more. Teen bit more. Maybe if we tried Dead of Winter version, it would be the other way around. That's right. Exactly. But Flick em Up is Board Game Geek's number <laughs> three, 677 overall rank. Uh, we just talked about it. We're it's really fun. It. Just have it. a shoot em up in the Wild West. It feels like a shootout. You know, you're trying to do it and you just miss and you graze somebody on the leg, but they don't go down. So they're just like a tough cowboy. They're just like, ah, I didn't put yeah. me down. And they go run behind a barrel or something. It's just really That's fun. Great. Try Flick em Up. It's Board Game Geek's number three. Let's get into our number three. Our number three is forty-seven ninety-seven overall, and that is called Kung Fu Zoo. Now, I have been privileged to get like an early, early, early copy, which is a nice wooden board. So if you see my pictures, it's an, it's a special edition one. But it, there, it is currently available. And this game is a dice flicking game. Everybody gets their own animal with different sides to the dice. So everybody will have a head, a butt, sides. Um, and so cool. depending on your flicking these your animal, going around one at a time, and there's four corners and you're trying to knock everybody out of the game. Now, it's gonna be basically you go until nobody can flick any more dice. Now, you're, mm. if you have a heads on the board, you get five points. If you have a side, you might get fewer points, like three. But if you get knocked out totally, you're just out for the game. So this is just like a simple game that you can play. There's different there's different versions that you could, there's different like modes you can play, like cage match and all these different things you can do. But everybody gets to be a different animal and you just have fun flicking. I've played with like eight people at one point and it's just like everybody's just like, ah, <laughs> the, the board gets crazy. And it, the, I love it. It's just great. <laughs> That sounds awesome. It's tumbling dice with fighting. With yeah. fighting, yeah. With it, it, in a square board. Yeah, it's awesome. So good. <laughs> yeah, I love Very that. Cool. I just like those games where you can just be hyper aggressive and try to knock everyone else out. You can try to maybe be a little conservative and get to the middle of the board and get the right you know, faces upward. Mm -hmm. uh, there's different strategies you can do. So it's not like complete chaos, but also it's not trying to be anything other than what it is, which is complete chaos you yeah. know so it's yeah. just uh yeah those types of games i love it you know i i a lot of this this list and the reason i like flicking games is like they're just supposed to be fun oh, they're supposed to be. yeah and but, but what's what's even more like clever about it is like if your feet side up you're just like over you can't take that die back to reshoot it otherwise you could take your die back and reshoot it if it comes back mm. to your turn otherwise you're just sitting there hoping somebody will turn your feet side dice right back up so you can join <laughs> back in and got maybe not for a minute. See, that's you, cool. got, you get KO'd for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's yeah, cool. little things like that where now all of a sudden there's, you know, a little bit, you got to help your, your fellow kung fu person yeah. out, your other animal, uh, is super cool. Like, that's all the rules I need for that. And then, like, didn't they just have fun yeah. after that? That's great. Yeah. Uh, that's Kung Fu Zoo, everybody. Boom. Our number uh, three. Three. Let's go ahead and get into Board Game Geeks number two. So uh, everybody's number two hours and board game geeks Shoot, is B -G -G. Pitch Car, the pitch car. big Pitch Car. Big, <laughs> the, big. It's just 363 the, overall. The real Pitch Car. The real <laughs> Yeah, <pitch> nothing <laughs> against Pitch Car Mini at all. But if you have big Pitch Car and you can get multiple sets, you just get track pieces like Legos. You can build whatever you can imagine. And there's all sorts of like specialty pieces. And again, people that have 3D printed just madness. Uh... Pitch car, I've seen it just, it's balanced precariously over four different tables and it's 30 yep. feet long and it's, and you have <laughs> 25 cars. It's just madness. Yep. But it's cool, like, man. Yep. Like, it's just, that's where a game where. Really dedicated to have something that big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it, and it was, you know, it's just like, oh, that's quite a, that's a, a big setup. But, you know, it's all about creativity with that one. And that's what I love about the game is. The rules and the, the idea of the game is is always the same. Win the race. But what you create and what kind of gauntlet you decide to put people through is up to you. And I love that because that, to me, harkens back to the Hot Wheels days yeah. where you get some track and you're like, I wonder if I stick a milk jug under this and create like a ramp and get a thing from the top of my bunk bed if I can make it jump. Like, that's 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 oh, a yeah. 90s, man. That's oh, what yeah. we did with our day. Right. So Pitch Car, like, reminds me of that, mm -hmm. which is so fun. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> 
See those things where they're like the wheels and the yes. hot wheels? You gotta get one of those for Fire you car. off. Like oh. in the middle so we can get it in there. <laughs> like that's that. actually a really good idea. We should do that. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Okay. Sorry, I'm back. Point is, we talked about Pitch Car Mini and we sort of talked about what we all like about Pitch Car and that. Indeed. Y'all Try are. Pitch Car. It feels like a car race. It's, it's just all about, about the epic moments. What you yeah, absolutely. That's all it is. <laughs> just either you either come in first or you crash and burn. There is no in between. The only way to play is to play for glory. Yeah. And, and you oh, just might play. achieve it. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's everybody's number two pitch car. We each have a number one, though. So let's get to it right now. Our and BGG's number one what? is no surprise, Crokinol. Coming Here's in at 70. Easy. It's elegant. It's, it's elegant. It's sensual. It's so, so good. It's everything <laughs> you want a board game. Yeah. It's just, it's so good. It's, it's beauty and it has simplicity. no right being this good. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It's, it does have it right. And it's there. And we love it. <laughs> It's you know, it should fantastic. be so easy just to flick that disc into the middle. Oh, why why can't I just do it nonstop? I, it doesn't happen as often as it should. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 such a simple game. We've talked about it a few times. You have a round board with a couple little pegs in the middle that and, and kind of rings of scoring. And if there's no if your opponent's not on the board, all you gotta do is get it into this middle ring and ideally into the very center hole, which is automatically points you get to take your disc off. So it's simple. It's right there in front of you. You just have to do this. <laughs> you just gotta flick it. <laughs> but then that never happens. And then your opponent's on the board. Then you have to hit your opponent so you can bank in. So it's so simple and yet so strategic. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah. It, it deserves all the praise in the world. Crokinole yes. is amazing. It does. We don't I have a, a you have a Crokinole board, Steph? Yeah. You actually don't have one. Oh, a nice I do, one. yeah. Yeah, beautiful. you got a nice one, right? So yeah. good. Love it. <sighs> <laughs> someday I want to I want to invest in a nice one or I would love I'd love to make one but we don't have a wood that'd be cool wood yeah you see all area. these boards that are painted out there I'm like wow that's also really nice <laughs> yeah I know yeah. there's so many they can, cool they can be ones. an art piece in their own way oh yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, so Crokinole, yeah, we've talked about it before. Uh, it's beautiful. If you ever get a chance, you're at a convention to have Crokinole, like Crokinole pop up a lot of conventions and stuff. Give it a try. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, it's, it's this so is fun. the best. It's the best. It is yeah. as fun as there's a reason. This is the only one of these that's the next closest one was Pitch Car for both of us. Yeah. And that is uh, 363. This one's in the top yeah. 100 still. Of yeah. all Crokinole's in the top, top 100. 100. Yeah. It's like, been around since 1876. So it's, it's, it's yes. had some staying There's a power. reason <laughs> it's <some> been around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's our number one. That's Board Game Geeks number one. Uh, everyone agrees Crokinole is absolutely fantastic. It's elegant, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. It is. It's beautiful. Um, ah, so thank you so much for joining us. I know. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for our top 10 flicking games. Yeah. We want to do something a little bit different. Um, and so Steph had the idea to think of like flicking games. Let's get dexterous today. There's lots of different games that you employ dexterity and flicking is probably the most prominent way to add a kind of dexterous that element. Or stacking, yeah. Or stacking, yeah, yeah uh, to a game. Uh, and they are really just a good time. So let us know in the comments below what your favorite... Um, dexterity games or flicking games in particular are. Uh, I'm excited for Sonora. Do you guys, that one's coming out from Pandasaurus. It's a flicking game. It sounds really there cool you go. and beautiful. So that's one that's coming out soon that I am very excited for. Cool. Make a flicking awesome. game fun and pretty with some good components. I know. <laughs> You're going to make me happy. I mean, that's what a lot it's of the, this kind of in common is a lot of things have cool components. They look nice and they're just satisfying and yeah. fun to play. They create entertaining, epic experiences. Um, so let us know in the comments below games that you're excited for that are coming out that you've heard of, games that you've played before, epic moments you had in a game of Pitch Car or Flip Ships or whatever it might be. Put all that in the comments below. And while you're at it, give a suggestion of a top 10 you would like to see us tackle. Indeed. We can do uh, themes, we can do publishers, uh, designers, mechanics, any sort of thing that we can compose a list and compare it to the folks of Board Game Geek. We're happy to do it for you. Yeah. Um, are we missing anything, folks? That's it. That's it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. I've been Mike. I'm Nick. And I'm Steph. We're the Three Amigos. We're out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye.